Hi everyone, this is Yanis Makula. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm sharing a look at some projects created with the new Spellbinders Floral Alphabet uh, collection. So this is a collection of better press plates and as the name suggests, these are alphabet letters. So we have all letters of the alphabet plus an ampersand. Now, if you remember the stitched alphabet collection from Spellbinders from several years ago, I actually pulled some of my cards that I created using those dies. This is in a way similar. Uh, you have your letter and then you have a little sub sentiment that you can add to the letter. With the stitched alphabet, you had the dies, and then there was a separate set of glimmer plates, and I believe there was a stamp set with additional sentiments. Like here, I have you are P phenomenal or you are D delightful. So this better press uh, collection is kind of similar, but the products here, the, the plates here are done a little bit differently. So let me grab one. Here I have the letter K, oh, excuse me, the letter L. So it's meant to say L and then love you. Now the love you is not a full love you. The letter L is actually missing. So you're the goal for these, the idea for these, is that you press the large letter and then you add a sub-sentiment. Uh, you can use the letter alone as I did on this card here and you can pair it with other sentiments so you can make a monogram card. For example, if you have a friend whose name is Anna, you can make a card like this. You have a uh, letter A in the background and then I added a sub-sentiment that says sending birthday wishes. So you can use these letters alone and add any sort of sub-sentiment that you want. You know, it can be a birthday, it can be encouragement, it can be congratulations, it can be feel better soon, anything like that. Or you can use the letter with the sentiment that it comes with together. Sadly, you can use just the sentiment alone because it's not a full sentiment, it is missing the first letter. I have already pressed several uh, examples for you. Now I say pressed, I did not actually better press with these plates. I like to foil with them. I love to use my better press plates for foiling. So I have foiled several examples just to show you what these letters look like. And guys, they're beautiful. They're so stunning. You have these delicate flowers and they're just so so beautiful. I mean, look at that detail, fine detail work. Um, I'm going to bring this card closer so you can see how this looks once it is colored. I press these, I keep saying pressed, I foil these in gold, but again, you can press them in black ink or colored better press ink. There are some amazing examples on the Spellbinders website where these alphabet letters are pressed in all sorts of different colors of ink and colored uh, in different colors. I think that is just so, so beautiful. So I only pressed, foiled, <laughs> I only foiled a handful. I do have the full alphabet, but I only did a couple because I wanted to create some cards for my friends. So I used the initials. Of course, I did one for myself, Yana, uh, Natalie, Tanya, uh, Kate, you know, so I just did a couple for my friends because that's my goal for um, for this video and for these plates. I also wanted to mention that the plates do not come with a coordinating die. So this uh, letter L, love you, this is all that you get in the package. You don't get anything else. Now the one set that does have a coordinating die included is the ampersand. Let me get this out of the baggie. So you have the beautiful, it's, it's just stunning, look at that. I mean, so, so pretty. So you have that beautiful ampersand, you have the coordinating die for the ampersand, and you also have additional sentiments here. So this one says happy birthday and many more. So it's a nice, uh, you can get just the ampersand if you want to create birthday cards. It's very beautiful, I love 
I particularly love that there are these dainty flowers included with each letter. I think they're just so beautiful. And the fact that they're not solid but outline allows you to add any other color to your image. Um, I also wanted to show you how I store my uh, plates these plates in particular. Uh, I mentioned this in one of my previous videos. So I, here I have one of the larger craft stacks from Spellbinder. So this is a new product. It's a storage product. So these are little stackable trays. So there is a tray and a lid. The tray is pretty, you know, it's pretty thick, so you can fit quite a lot of product in here. And the idea is that you can either store your uh, dies, your plates, your tools, or you can store parts and pieces of a project that you're working on. Here I have, let me grab one. So here I have one with the uh, Better Press registration. These are a little bit tough to open, but on the other hand, they also won't open easily. I mean, if you happen to drop one onto the floor, it's not going to fly open. So it's, you know, it's a plus and a minus uh, for these storage boxes, but I do really like them. So they fit quite a lot of, uh, a lot of things in here. Um, so here, for example, I have my better press registration plates. Let me close this. And by the way, the boxes are stackable. So I can either stack multiple large boxes or I can stack a large and two small boxes. Here I have another project that I'm working on. This is, can show you this, because that's for an event uh, with Spellbinders that is coming in May, so can show you that. But yeah, you can see how nicely these stack. And I ha I'm slowly starting to use them for organizing and storing my project uh, products and projects on my desk. Okay, so let me walk you through my card. Uh, I have already created this uh, card with a letter A and I used the essential arches die because I wanted to have this beautiful arch shape. I used pink cardstock, this is the fruit punch for the inside of my card because I wanted to have that pop of pink. I wanted to have, I wanted to make sure that this card was, you know, bright and cheerful. So I used the pink cardstock. Uh, I also added the sending birthday wishes sentiment and this sentiment comes from the mini everyday sentiments set. And then I use the, um, a die, a banner die from the happy parents day set, but you can use any banner die for this. Um, now, if you look closely, by the way, so this is a glimmer plate. This is a better press plate. If you look closely, you will notice that there is a huge difference in the thickness of the line. So, the sending birthday wishes actually has a very thick line to it compared to the thin and delicate lines on the letter A. Uh, if you want to have the thinner lines, you can use better press sentiments and foil them. Let me just grab one. I have foiled one. I haven't had the time to cut it out, but I have foiled several and they do come in a, uh, in a single plate. Let me find them. Okay, so here I have the coordinating die for these. Here are the better press um, sentiments. So they come in a plate, in a single plate like this, and then you have a single die that coordinates with all of these, so you can cut them all at once. And these are from the always and forever sentiment strips. So I like to make a bunch of these sentiment strips. I keep them in a little container on my desk. You can see I have some that I made uh, for Christmas, some that I made with some similar club um, glimmer plates. So I like to make a bunch and then keep them here so they're ready and I can just pull one that I need for my card instead, instead of having to create a new sentiment every single time. Uh, I also combined uh, several different floral dies for this card. So here I used mainly the club blooms. You can see these large flowers. So these uh, four large flowers are from the club blooms die set. It is still one of my favorite die sets. Now I also have this little leaf here. It's a different shape leaf. I did not like the leaves from the club blooms set. And instead I used this leaf from the sealed, um, sealed 
collection. I don't remember the name of this die set, but I have the SKU, so I'll have that listed uh, in the video description below. But I really like the shape of these leaves. So I, basically I just die cut this and that's the leaf that you see here. I also have little flowers and these flowers are these from yet another sealed set. Again, I'll have that listed below. And then I have the teeny tiny leaves and these come from the very first Spellbinders floral set like, I mean, this type, of, uh, this type of floral set, and that's the mini blooms and sprigs. So I'm actually going to work on, uh, on these cards. I'm going to pause, die cut a bunch of pieces for these projects, and I'll walk you through the process of how I'm creating these. So I have started to die cut the arch shapes for my card. Here, for this card, I use the largest arch. And I also use the largest arch for the card base. Now for this next panel, I actually use the second uh, largest because I want to have a little bit of that pink border or whichever color border I decide to, uh, you know, whichever color I decide to use for this card, I want to have a little bit of that border show in my final project. I kind of liked uh, this, I kind of like this a lot better than this. Although this also looks nice, but I do have a little bit of that pink show and I don't quite like how it shows in the finished card. But um, I do have a tip that I wanted to share with you. So if you look closely, you can see that there is a little bit of overfoiling. What I have found is that I like to use my best ever craft tape to remove that overfoiling. In fact, it works really well. Uh, sometimes it works even better than using an eraser. So I'm just going to zoom in real close so you guys can see this in detail. And I'm just going to put a piece of tape over it, lightly tap my finger or run my finger across it. And then as I pull the tape away gently, you can see that it picks up some of that overfoiling. Should not be putting it over the solid area, but you get an idea. So it actually, I have found this to be like the easiest way to remove overfoiling and the fastest way to remove overfoiling, especially in these delicate, tiny areas. If you feel your tape is getting a little bit too, um, if you feel it's losing its stick, just, you know, grab a fresh piece of tape and remove, keep removing that overfoiling until you are happy with the result. And I think this looks pretty good. Now I did my foiling in Spellbinders Gold Foil on the Simon Says Stamp 130 pound cardstock. I really love this cardstock for hot foiling and also for Copic coloring. I will be coloring these with Copics. Now this cardstock or any cardstock, when you put your top cutting plate on top, even if it's a brand new plate, this is I mean, unless it's like super brand new, has, hasn't been used, the top plate will leave some indentations in the paper. Here you can see that I have some indentations from previous cutting um, sessions. So I have found that it's always helpful to just place uh, a piece of paper on top and that paper will protect your, uh, your good paper from the cut marks from the cutting plate. So just add that on top, send it through. And you now have a perfectly cut panel without any marks um, on your paper. Let me grab one where I didn't do that to show you um, the comparison because actually I think I didn't do it on this one. This one's pretty good. Um, yeah, because I did use a clear cutting plate, uh, like a brand, I did, because I did use a brand new cutting plate to cut this one out. So if you find you're getting marks on your paper from the die cutting, just make sure to add a piece of scrap paper. This is just printer paper. So I have added the die cut flowers onto my little card. Just love the way this looks. So I used different shades of yellow and I'm also going to use yellow for the card base. Now to create the card base, I have sh uh, half a sheet uh, of half of a letter size sheet cardstock. I believe this is saffron from Spellbinders and I'm just going to score this at four and a half. I'm using the Spellbinders trimmer and at the bottom here, there is a scoring blade. So I actually 
keep those blades in my trimmer so I have the cutting blade at the top and then the scoring blade at the bottom. So if I need to score something, I just align it at the bottom or if I need to cut something, I just align it at the top and I find this to be very convenient. I'm going to use my bone folder to burnish the fold like so and now I just need to get my die. So here I have my die, the arch die. This is the largest die from the Essential Arches set. Uh, and I'm going to die cut this card base. Now, what I like to do, because when you do your die cutting, you typically end up having some cut marks on your paper. So I will flip the paper like so. So the fold is on the right hand side. I'm going to position and align my die and tape it in place. So I'm going to actually flip it back like so, so that I can see what I'm doing. Position it in my die. Use pieces of yellow tape to tape it down and... Okay, so if you look closely, the blade, the edge of the die, the cutting edge of the die actually the paper is not going over the edge, so the fold of the paper is not going to be cut. I will just cut this top arch shape. Let me grab my die cutting machine. So here I have my Platinum 6. I'm going to place my die on top, add the top cutting plate, and I'm going to send it through the machine. I'm not going to send it all the way though. I'm just going to send it, um, you know, about where the arch shape ends because I don't want to send the whole thing through just the top part. I'm not actually cutting anything else just that top part so that should be enough and let's take a look. Yeah looks like this is good. Okay I have my card base nice and cut. Okay, so if I, if I bring it closer, you will see that this part has a lot of those cut marks for my cutting plate. This part looks relatively okay. And then this, this looks half flattened, which is, you know, also okay. I don't, at least I don't have the cut marks on this side. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to use this die and die cut another panel from the same saffron cardstock. And this panel is going to go on the front of my card. So let's put it like this. So this panel will actually hide those imperfect cut marks on the card front. This will make my card base a little bit thicker, but I don't mind, I actually prefer it like this. So there, I have another panel and this panel will go on the front like so. I'm going to use my Barely Arts glue and adhere this die cut panel onto the front of my card. So let's get everything aligned. I'm going to pop the magnets on top so that they press the paper down while the glue is drying. I kind of prefer to use magnets versus using clear blocks. I feel like they apply um, more pressure. Okay, next we are going to do some coloring. So on this card, I colored the flowers using pink markers and a pink pen. Let me zoom in so you can see this better. Okay, so I use the Copic um, RV10 and RV11 markers, and then these little tiny dots were colored using a pen. I have this La Pen set from Marvi, and I used this little pen. It's, it's beautiful, it has a very fine nib, and I was able to use that to get into those fine lines. For this card, I have picked a yellow pen, just actually no, not yellow. I, sorry, I picked a green pen, I forgot. So I picked a green pen. Uh, this one's from a different set and I'll have those linked below. So these are very fine. Uh, the nib is 0.3 uh, millimeters. So that allows me to color 
you know, very small, very detailed area. So let's, let's try and color this. I'm trying to angle this a little bit better because I'm getting quite a bit of a glare from all of that foiling. But if I tilt my head a little bit, I am actually able to see what I'm doing without getting my head in the camera. So bear with me as I color this. There, you can see how, how fun and how detailed this looks. Let me zoom in even more. See? It's a super detailed nib. Copic marker, I would not be able to do this. Um, I mean, I probably would, but it would just be a little bit messy because I would probably get ink outside of these lines. For the rest of the images, I'm going to use Copic markers. So I have a Y35 Copic to color the flowers yellow. So I'm just going to add a little bit of color to each petal. I should probably blend this out using a different marker, maybe um, Y13. Let's see if that works. Yeah, I mean, not too bad. So I'm just going to combine these two to color the petals yellow. I'm going to pause the camera and color um, so that I can get a little bit closer. Uh, and then for the leaves, I have these, they look like ginkgo biloba uh, tree, uh, leaves to me. And I'm going to use green. So this is the YG03. It's the same green that I used for the pink card. So my color combo for this card is obviously a simple one. I have yellow and green. Okay. And I'm going to blend that out using the YG01. Again, I'm going to uh, pause my recording, color everything, and then come back once it's all colored. I finished coloring. I also added gems onto each flower into each open flower. Now I'm using thin foam adhesive squares to adhere this onto my card base. So this is just going to give it a little bit of dimension. And my card is, I was gonna say finished, is almost finished because I still want to add a sob sentiment. So here are the two cards side by side. You can see the difference between having um, you know, a colorful border around the front panel and not having the colorful border. I do like both options. Um, I feel like this is just a little bit more clean and simple. This one is not quite as clean, but yeah, like I really like both. So here's a look at the cards I have created with the all occasion floral alphabet better press plates from Spellbinders. I have several different, different color combinations uh, and just, you know, different inspiration options for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for spending time with me today. Love you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.